This video introduces you to epsilon contract verbs. We'll look at contractions and accents. Epsilon contract verbs are verbs where the stem ends in epsilon. To this, we add our regular verb endings. This will result in having two vowels next to each other. Those vowels then contract into one syllable. For our sample verb, I love, the Greek is phileo. The stem is phile, and the ending is o. Let's look at the indicative. I've written out the stem six times. To it, we add our regular endings. And then, before we do any contractions, we apply our accent following the accent rules. If the last syllable is long, then the accent goes on the second to last. So this applies to phileo, phileace, and philete because the last syllable is long in all three of those. And if the last syllable is short, i.e. contains an epsilon or an iota, then the accent goes on the third to last syllable. This applies to our last three, phileomen, phileeta, and phileusi. Now we apply our contractions. So when you have an epsilon plus an omega, you get an omega. If you have an epsilon plus an omicron upsilon, then you get omicron upsilon, which is pronounced oo. If you have an epsilon plus an omicron, you also get oo. So you'll notice in these three, we have an epsilon plus an o sound, and the epsilon sound disappears completely. If we combine an epsilon and another epsilon, it comes out as the digraph A, spelled epsilon iota. And if you add an epsilon to epsilon iota, it also comes out as the digraph A. So in our first one, phileo, the epsilon plus omega contracts to omega. And now we apply our accent. Since the accent was an acute and it got smushed together into the contraction, it becomes a circumflex on our final syllable, giving us philo. In philetes, e plus a gives us a, and again it becomes a circumflex, a circumflex accent, philetes. Same thing happens in the third singular, e a contracts to a, and the last syllable gets a circumflex, file. In the first plural, et o contracts to u, and because there was an accent on that epsilon, there is now a circumflex on u, giving us filumen. Et e contracts to a, giving us fileta, and et u contracts to u with a circumflex, giving us filusi. For the imperatives and the infinitive, we'll add our standard endings. And remember, we apply the accents first before we do contractions. So uh, if the last syllable is long, which is true of filet ain, the infinitive, then the accent goes on the second to last syllable. And if the last syllable is short, which is true of both of our imperatives, then the accent goes on the third to last syllable giving us filete and filete. Now we apply our contractions. E, e contracts to a, giving us file, and the accent was not involved in the contraction, so it stays exactly where it was, giving us file. In the second plural, e, e contracts to a, and the accent is involved in the contraction, so we get a circumflex on our new syllable, filete. And in the infinitive, e plus a contracts to a, and the accent becomes a circumflex, giving us filene, the end.